All right, it's been long enough. Let's talk about rigging. Rigging is the process of binding your character to a 3D skeleton that you control to strike poses and animated movements. This also applies for FNAF as these characters have skeletons of their own that allow them to move in environments. So if your model is boneless, then it's just going to be stuck in the T-pose for all eternity. In this video, I'm going to teach you the basics of rigging and how to expand upon it with bone shapes, IK, and bone drivers. I'm happy to announce that this video has been kindly sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community available out there with thousands of creative classes for artists and by artists. These classes range from graphic design, music, photography, illustration, and so much more. And out of all of these, there's even several classes related to 3D artwork and a section dedicated to learning specifically in Blender, which is basically right up our alley. Now that the summer is starting, I've had a lot more time to focus on my hobbies and passions I love as of recently. I've wanted to learn how to up the quality of my renders and make them look more cinematic. I've been diving into these amazing Blender classes by K1 available on the platform. These classes have taught me a lot and helped my artwork massively in the long run. They have classes ranging in countless categories from beginners to more advanced creators, making it so you can learn at your own pace and become a pro within hours. So if you want to level up your skills with animation, rendering, lighting, or even discover something new over the summer, you should check out the other classes available on the platform. As a bonus offer, the first 500 people to click my link below can access all of these classes for completely free during a one month free trial. By clicking the first link in the description, you'll receive one month of free access to the entire platform of Skillshare. This way, you can take in 30 days worth of free classes to expand your creativity. So, if any of this sounds intriguing to you, make sure to go in the description, click my link, and sign up to Skillshare today. So, in regards to that intro, I kinda lied. This video is going to be split into two parts. For the first part, we'll cover the basics of rigging like making the armature and parenting it to the body. And in the second part, we'll cover things like IK, constraints, bone shapes, and drivers. I would have had this all in one video, but it is what it is. Let's say you just finished the model that you're proud of. Or, if you're like me, stripped an existing model of its bones because I'm way too lazy to model something. Press Shift A and select Armature. Select the bone properties and make sure to check in front so we can clearly see our bone. Now tap into edit mode and drag this to a point where it directly lines up with the pelvis. This will be our pelvis bone. Once you get something that lines up decently, press E and extrude along the Z axis until it reaches our neck. This is our torso bone. Now if your model has one, extrude from here along the Y axis and press LP and select disconnect. Move this forward to reach our bow tie. Something you can do to make sure this lines up is go to object mode, select the part you want, hold shift S and hit cursor to select it. Now hit the bones end and press shift S again, but this time hit selection to cursor. Then do it again with the other part of the bone, make sure to drag it out. This will ensure that the bone rotates properly without any weird offset. Make sure our torso tip aligns with the neck and press E to make the neck bone. Now we can do it again for the head. Press E at the tip of the head to make a bone for the mask. A little personal preference, but I'm going to change the bone type to stick because it's just easier for me to see. Now select our bone, press Alt-P and disconnect it. Now move it to a place where the mask should open along the head. Now do this step again, but move it to the place where the jaw would move. If you have an endo jaw, you'd have to repeat this step again. Yes, repetitive, I know. Now extrude up from the head, disconnect the bone, and try to line this up with the ears. If you want a more accurate lineup, just snap the cursor to the joint's origin, then snap the bone there. While we're making these bones, we're only going to do it for one side. We'll do the other half later. Do the same thing with the eyelids and try to line it up to the best of your ability. If the eyes are more like FNAF 1s, you'll probably have to snap the cursor to the eye's origin to get a more accurate rotation. Maybe switch to pose mode to test how it rotates as well. Duplicate this bone and adjust it to fit the bond width. One would probably do the eyes after this, but I'm getting really bored and so I'm just going to switch to the shoulders. Extrude from the neck, disconnect the bone, and drag it to the shoulder. Adjust its position as best as possible and make sure it's centered. Test it out a bit and you'd be done with the shoulder. For the most part, rigging miles like this follows this exact repetitive process. At least this part of it. Ah! We're just going to follow the presence of snapping the cursor to our main joints if necessary, extruding the bone from its parent, and moving or snapping it to our needed place. For the arm, I'm setting the cursor to the ball joints and snapping the points of our arm bone there for a more accurate rotation. Once you get to the hand, extrude a bone from the hand bone, disconnect it, 
and move it to where it lines up with your finger. Do some extrusions where it lines up with every joint and make sure it looks good from the sides. With this, you should have one finger done. Luckily, since this model's fingers look the exact same, I can just duplicate it and rotate it to fit the other fingers. Depending on the model, you probably should have snapped the 3D cursor to the joints to make a more accurate rotation, but if you can't tell, I am very lazy. If you have a hand that's more like FNAF 1 or 2, you can probably get away with the same process, but maybe add some extra joints for some reasons I'll explain later. Finally moving on to the eye, snap the cursor to the eyeball's origin, go into edit mode on the rig and press shift A to add another bone. Select the bone's tip and press R, X, and 90. If it's backwards, do negative 90 instead. Drag this joint backwards by pressing G and Y so it only moves on that axis and you're done with the eye. Make sure to shift select the eye bone, then the head bone and press Ctrl P and keep offset. This is so when you rotate the head, the eyes will move with it. Moving on to the legs, extrude down and make sure it snaps to the joints like we discussed before. Don't be an idiot like me and snap the cursor to the bone. The foot might look intimidating, but just extrude it from the joint down to the toes. Also, for some reason, the leg is literally never parented to the pelvis. Don't ask me why, I don't know. To fix this, simply select the thigh, then the pelvis, and parent them with Control p You probably think we're almost done here, but you're unfortunately wrong. Before we do anything else, we have to go through the agonizing process of naming every single bone on this bone. Select the bone you want to name, then go into the bone tab. Then go to this little menu here and just name it whatever you want. You don't really have to worry about naming the bones by their left or right as of now as we'll take care of that later. I don't recommend skipping this step because it's quite important and will save us a lot of time in the future. Now I'm not going to show this step because it's uh quite self explanatory. But I know a few people are going to get confused with naming the fingers. It doesn't really matter how you name them but I tend to name them in this order for organization's sake. Or you can just do a quick google search and get their names immediately. Once we have every bone named, you should be done with making the rig. As for the right side, it's smooth sailing from here. Symmetry, my friend! Since Blender might be a tad bit stupid, some of these bones might not line up with the other side of the body. If you need to, make sure to snap these bones to their proper joints, make sure it's lined up properly, then you should be done making the rig. For real this time. Now for the boring part, parenting the body to the rig. Simply shift select the parts you want, then select the rig. Go into post mode and select the bone. Press Control P and bone. Oh. Oh, right. Make sure your model doesn't have any weird vertex groups, because if these vertex groups have names of bones that aren't in your model, then it's gonna break. No, I did not spend 30 minutes trying to figure this out. Trying this again, shift select the parts needed, then select your rig. Go into post mode, select the bone, press Control P, and hit the bone option. There we go. Something I like to do after this is hide the objects we just parented with H, then only bring back the armature. Helps me better know what I've done, and keep things cleaner. And shows me how close I am to finishing this nightmare. For most parts on the FNAF model, you follow this same premise. Shift select the body parts, then shift select the armature, go into pose mode, select the bone, control P, and hit bone. Oh come on bro! As I said before, make sure you remove every vertex group with bone names from model parts because you're just gonna run into this issue every single time. As I was saying, rigging FNAF models follows this exact same process of ship selecting and parroting. I'll keep this part of the video unedited in the description just in case you want to see the entire process. But something that's more agonizing that I'll have to get into is the hands. If you have more FNAF 1 style hands, you'll have to go through a process called weight painting. This is when you manually draw and highlight the areas that are supposed to move when you move the bone. So basically, red means active and blue means inactive. However, this process can be an absolute nightmare and get incredibly frustrating just because one part refuses to cooperate. This is why I suggested adding those extra bones earlier. With these, you can just shift select the hand, then the bone, press Ctrl P, and automatic weights. This means that Blender will do all the weight painting for you, and while not perfect, it's definitely still usable and gets the basic idea across. But if this doesn't work, then you're gonna have to put up with the exact nightmare I just described. For these hands, however, they appear to be one mesh, but they're also still separate parts. So what we're gonna do is remove the vertex groups, then shift select the armature, press Ctrl P, and with empty groups. Then we're gonna select the armature, then the hand, and go into weight painting mode. 
Yes, I know I slandered it earlier, but bear with me. Go into edit mode while having everything selected and press Ctrl L to select one finger. Then go into weight painting mode, make sure this bone is selected, I'll select the bone that you want, then go to face select. Once you've done this, press Ctrl X. This will completely fill that finger with red, meaning that only that finger rotates when you move that bone. Yes, you have to do this for every single finger. But hey, on the bright side, at least you don't have to paint an entire hand, right? <laughs> yeah, screw this, this sucks. Bringing the fingers like this follows this exact same process of selecting the finger in edit mode, then selecting the bone in weight painting mode, and pressing Ctrl X to fill the entire finger. Now, this process can be long, painful, and boring. If I try fitting this entire section into the video, it ends up being an hour long. But if you still don't understand and want to watch me do it in real time, I'll leave this footage unedited in the description to hopefully make things easier. And with this, we've covered the basics of rigging. We went over making the armature, parenting to the body, and weight painting the fingers. <laughs> Fun! In the next half, we'll cover how to make bone drivers, set up IK, and make some bone shapes. I'll try uploading this part as soon as possible, so make sure to stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.